Okay, let me know if you could see my screen. Yes. Awesome. Okay. Is it weird? Just a sec. Okay, weird, but I can't see my presentation. Could you see my presentation? No. No black screen. Also the same story from my side, and it's weird. So you probably should no, see my it's, screen. No, it's okay. Okay, awesome. That means that from this point, we can stop the recording. Um, okay, so today I'll tell you about the observability, observability layer implementation with uh, such tool as open telemetry. But before we will start to look on the open telemetry, let's uh, try to remind uh, ourselves like which like approaches we actually have uh, like to implement um, collection of the observability data and like one more um, think about the agenda like we will go uh, with the standard flows uh, of the observability pipelines and then we will check all the items related to them uh, open telemetry itself. So uh, let's check how we, for example, can implement the logging stuff. So I had a session when I told you about like the uh, monitoring stuff, about the logging stuff, and we had a session about the tracing stuff. So it's a great opportunity for us also to talk about the tracing. So there are a lot of different ways how we can like implement the like logging pipelines. Yeah, but the last time what we discussed, we discussed like the Grafana and Loki stuff. Yeah, but beside the Grafana and Loki, we have, for example, very popular um, way. It's the ELK stack. Uh, so how it actually works, we have the logging agent that collects uh, the logs from the log files and send it to some middleware then to some processor and then to the storage. And then you can visualize everything from the storage. So in this case, it's the file beat, log stash, elastic search, and Kibana. Um, the same story with Loki. So as you probably remember, like we have uh, the applications uh, and additionally to applications, we have the logs collection agent that collects all the logs from the log files, send it to Loki, and then we visualize all all the logs through the Grafana. Uh, there are a lot of different ways, but that's our like most popular ways how we can deal with the logging stuff. Now let's take a look on the monitoring stuff. So um, again, very popular way it's the Prometheus stuff. So, but with the Prometheus, we don't need any kind of like collection agents here. We have the application that expose the metrics through the endpoint and we collect it with the Prometheus. But mostly uh, like the applications uh, had a chance to implement like the exposing of the metrics in the correct format. And sometimes we need like the third party exporter that will export the metrics in the format that is compatible with Prometheus. And again, like as usual, we can visualize everything, for example, with Grafana. Uh, another thing is tracing. Yeah, what actually is the tracing? It's the collection of the different kind of data during the invocation of the one user request. For example, we have the microservices architecture. Yeah, and like um, our service send request to another services. That services send request to the database and et cetera, et cetera. And we want to like monitor the whole flow and understand like the duration on the which step of uh, of the request. And also um, we want to understand like maybe some uh, intermediate data that uh, uh, appears uh, at the intermediate steps. Yeah, for that purposes, we usually use the open tracing standard and uh, the tool, like the ecosystem that implements the open tracing standard, it's the Jagger. 
Um, so here is represented the schema, how actually the deployment of the Jagger looks like and how we collect the data from the applications. So we inject in our application some specific Jagger client that is actually, usually it's a library that is based, like language based. Yeah, and here we, you could see like the set of the languages that supports sending of the uh, Jagger tracings. It sends all the data to the Jagger agent and through the collector, it will be stored to the, to the, in the, into the database. So usually it's Elasticsearch or Cassandra. And then we just visualize all the tracing stuff through the, through the UI. Yeah. So we will also take a look at how, how we can like visualize the tracing data and I'll actually um, demonstrate you how it looks like but for now just um, let's work with uh, with this schema another way like beside the jagger we have the um, tool that is called zipkin so it's a pretty older standard than open tracing that allows us to collect the tracing spans uh, and then visualize it through the through the UI. Yeah, but for that purposes, again, we need to instrument our application with some libraries or additional collection, collector agents um, to collect all the data and send it through the transport to the storage. So the architecture of the Zipkin ecosystem looks almost as a um, like architecture of the Jagger. Yeah, so for all that stuff, we need to support um, the backend, yeah, and also we need uh, to instrument our application with different libraries. Yeah, for example, if you want to um, configure the complete observability layer for our application, we need to collect logs, metrics, and traces. Yeah, so for that purposes, we need at least three different libraries that we need to inject to our application that probably might cause some some different uh, different constraints for uh, for that yeah so and like for solution of this problem we have like um, the tool that we will talk about it it's the um, like open telemetry so it will help us to combine all the observability data uh, do the same flow and manage it like with just one step. Yeah, what actually the open telemetry is? It's uh, some open source observability framework, but mostly they call call it as a framework. But um, I think it's like more than framework. It's some kind of ecosystem. Yeah, but it's pretty simple because mm -hmm. like um, it um, contains just. Uh, like the libraries for the different programming languages and also it contains like just a specific collector that we can use but optionally can use yeah we just need to understand that like open telemetry it's not the back end it's not something like the platform for analyzing of the data it's a way how we can ship our observability data to some backends without using of the different third party libraries so this will this helps us to standardize the sending of the observability data yeah so just keep this in mind that it's not the replacement of the um, different platforms it's like the middleware layer that helps us to organize everything in the one in one way so this schema actually demonstrate all this all the stuff that I mentioned before. Yeah, for example, our application produce logs, tracings, and metrics data. So in all that cases, we need um, the separate library for the um, for the different kind of observability data. Then it send it to some some collector, and from that collector, it send it to the backend. In the logs way. We usually use some kind of middleware. It could be like log files, or it could be some some kind of pipes, or it could be some kind of intermediate storages. So something like that. And after that, we also need to collect the data. So as you remember again from the my previous session, the like log, logs pipelines, it's um, pretty complicated stuff. Yeah, because 
usually we have like uh, a lot of logs and less amount of tracing or metrics data. So just just keep this in mind. Yeah, with open telemetry stuff, we don't actually need uh, all different libraries for the different observability data types. We can just instrument the application with just one library and then send all the data to the collector. Yeah, and from that collector, we can send the correlate telemetry data to our backend. So all that data probably on the intermediate layer could be like correlated. So in the first way, you will have the independent kind of data. Yeah? And in this way, you can, for example, add some components that will um, like analyze and find some kind of anomalies or correlations between logs, traces, and metrics. So it gives us one more um, good opportunity um, like to have like, good, um good profit from our data yeah but in this case we actually we use the open telemetry collector as the middleware way however like the open telemetry framework that we will put inside of our application it allows us to send data not just to the open telemetry but also to the different framework so it standardized the observability data types and then it can can like convert it to the different kind of formats that is compatible with the different platforms. Yeah, so it like it's a one more uh, great thing from from that approach that, for example, you can easily migrate from one observability platform to another one. For example, you collect like the logs from the um, like your applications and send it to your self-hosted ELK stack. Uh, stack. Yeah. So you can just in one turn make the migration of your logs data and send it, for example, to the data data dog, yeah, or for example to logs.io or any other kind of platform. Or if you, for example, work inside of the AWS cloud, you can send it to the AWS cloud watch. And, or for example, you can like split your data and send your logs data, for example, to two different destinations. So the same with the traces mm -hmm. and the same with the metrics. So it means that you have, uh, again, still the same observability data, but you can control the format and you can control the destination where you will send those data. Why here we actually have the collectors? Because sometimes we need to perform some, uh, some different modifications of our data. We can actually mm, perform this modification on the application layer. So the open telemetry framework will give all the tools that is presented in the collector, but uh, it also presented in the framework. So we can do all that changes on the application side, but this could affect the like, performance of our application. So it means that on application layer, we just need to collect the data and send it uh, somewhere, yeah, actually to our collector. In collector, we will process our data and send it to the final, um, final destination. Yeah. Uh, before we will start like checking of the all the items, we need to understand what we have in our like in the open telemetry framework. We have two different definitions. We have the API and SDK, and we need just to understand um, what is the main difference because because usually when engineers start to work with open telemetry, these th those two definitions actually confusing yeah so the api it's the set of the instruments for the different programming languages um that represents the basic data for example like log record event or metrics data or tracing span uh, or something like that and if you for example uh, like create your login library yeah in that case you are able to use like the API part from the framework, instrument your library with the API, yeah, to use like the same um, uh, form items format, the, like uh, open telemetry. Another way we have the SDK. So SDK, it's a higher level of integration. So it helps us to, it provides the integration with already existing libraries or frameworks. For example, if you are if you, if you have like the Java application and you use log4g library to 
provide the um, logging. So the SDK proposed the appenders for that log for G library. Yeah, so the API, it's a simpler way. It's like uh, basic resources and SDK, it's a high level resources. Usually when you install the SDK, the API will be installed automatically because it has the relation. Mm -hmm. But when you install the API, it doesn't require the SDK. So just again, keep this in mind. Yeah, so, or for example, you have like, if you probably remember, we had chance to look up on the um, Prometheus um, metrics exporter development. Yeah, so for that case, the SDK provides uh, the same way. So from, from that point, you don't need to implement your own um, metric exporter. Yeah? You can use the already uh, completed parts from the SDK. And uh, so SDK provides like a lot of uh, completed items that you can use uh, on a high level with your application. Yeah, so again, let's summarize. We use API for um, instrumenting of our libraries and we use the SDK for instrumenting of our application. Uh, what are about the supported languages? So it supports already 12 languages, uh, like most popular languages, uh, and like mostly it would cover like almost 90 percentage of um, all existing projects. However, like the APIs uh, are pretty flexible. And for example, if you need to use any other kind of programming language, you can easily implement it by yourself. Yeah, so, but for that purposes, you need to know the goal line. So all the time when I'm doing some kind of sessions for the DevOps engineers, I'm noticing that um, you need to know the goal line because the goal line, it's mostly programming language for the DevOps engineers. So beside, beside the Python, for now, you need to know the goal line because all the uh, important tools are written with the goal line. Yeah. So if you will go to the main uh, website of the Open Telemetry project, you will find for each programming language, you will find the separate documentation that describes how to use it, how to inject it to your application, and actually how to uh, perform all the necessary actions. Uh, so. Uh, what we have actually for now with open telemetry so it's like older um, screenshot yeah however like the traces are fully compatible so you can use like it's a stable feature yeah and you can definitely use it um, like on your production side the same for the metrics yeah because from the screenshot here, you can see that the release candidate was announced at like May 22. Yeah, so for now, the metrics component of the open telemetry framework actually also in the stable mode. So with logging stuff, we have like all the API and SDK that is provisioned. Um, the, the provisioning of the API is fully completed, but the SDK is still in the, in the development mode. So what it means, it means that, for example, if you have your own login library, you will be need to use the open telemetry API like, to uh, send the data in, in the open telemetry compatible format. Yeah, because SDK gives us ability um, actually to inject uh, already existing solution to already existing libraries. Yeah, but in this case, like the logs um, component is not completed for 100 percentage but it doesn't mean that you can actually um, you cannot use it for the production purposes it means just that you need to um, like spend a little bit more time um, to instrument the login part but i'll show all that items and you will see that um it doesn't it, it sounds like something very complicated but it's uh, like about a couple of lines of the code. So just keep this in mind. What about the instrumentation? Yeah, so the uh, uh, open telemetry framework give us ability to um, actually instrument our application in some cases, even without touching of the application code. So we will be need just to wrap 
our application command that we will use to start the application over like wrap it with uh, additional utility that will inject all the dependencies to our application pod. but this fully works again for the traces and uh, for the metrics yeah but uh, for the login stuff again you will be need to uh, spend more time to implement for this but again i'm i am saying that more time but <laughs> don't scare about this so and as you could see that like each kind of data it used the api to uh, provide the like, to convert the data to to the basic resources that are compatible with open telemetry standard and then it used the sdk like to send it to some kind of uh, to export the data to some kind of third party um, destination or to the open telemetry collector. And here, as you could see, we have the auto and we have the manual instrumentation. So I described what actually the auto instrumentation. So you had the uh, application, you just wrap the application with uh, another comment. So you, you will call the run of your application through the another application and uh, like that uh, wrapper will inject all the dependencies for the manual instrumentation what you actually need you need to import the open telemetry api and sdk libraries to um, uh, to your project then you need to configure the open telemetry api yeah uh, it means that you need to uh, like, define what you will send you will send like metrics traces or logs or you will send just something specific so um, it's a good notice that like if when we use the open telemetry it doesn't mean that we need to um like send send all the uh, all kind of observability data so we can like select what we will send then you need to configure the open telemetry sdk so um, the most configuration of it will be will define that um like where we will send our data yeah so we will prepare the settings of the for the exporting of our data then we need to create the telemetry data again but uh, it depends like if we use uh, combination of the automatic and manual instrumentation mostly we won't we need this step but if you like decided to do everything manually what actually also not not bad choice yeah uh, in that case you will be need to just to add like for example creation of the tracing in some places of your application code and for example like sending of the logs like log emitting of the log logs um, events in some in some places of your application it's a good choice because you can still you can use like the open telemetry framework to instrument your application uh like to replace like three different libraries that you will use for the logs traces and uh, metrics you can just uh, replace it with the open telemetry uh, api and sdk yeah so mostly with uh, open uh, telemetry framework yeah, and then you will be able like, to easily migrate from the one backend to another backend or perform the uh, processing of your data in one way or another way. And the last step is the exporting of your data. So as I mentioned before, uh, like you will start your application uh, and we'll pass the, um, some additional settings for the destination where you will send your data. For example, on the step three, you configure it that you want to send the tracing data to the Jagger. Uh, and on the exporting data step, you will just uh, put the setting with the endpoint to your um, the Jagger backend. So it's pretty actually simple one by one. It's described as a five different ways, but again, we will um, look on the practical demo and you'll see that. Um, like this process uh, mostly easier than than we expect. Um, as I mentioned before, like we can use the open telemetry framework of our application to send data to the different uh, different kind of backends. Yeah, but um, and we can perform the modification of the data on the application level. But 
again, it's not a good practice. The good practice is to send it to some open telemetry collector and on the collector side perform all the changes. Yeah, because the uh, collector will have uh, the, the, like the separate uh, resources uh, for performing of the operation. And this won't affect your application. Mostly the collector runs, for example, if you run everything on the Kubernetes or you run everything on the VMs, so the collector will be running on the, on the same machine uh, with your application. Yeah, uh, so it means that the sending of the data won't have like a lot of uh, like a big latency or something like that. So how the open telemetry collector looks like. So we can like use the collector to get the data with the receivers. Then we will uh, apply some changes with processors and we will use the exporters to send the data to some kind of another backend. So as receiver, we can use uh, like OTLP uh, endpoint. So uh, all the data like that we like, want to send from the open telemetry instrumented application, it could be sent like easily sent with OTLP uh, protocol. Yeah, because like this protocol accept the data um, in a standard format. Yeah, and for example, once you will perform all the changes, like you will be able to with exporters, you will be able to transform it to some specific format and send it um, send it to the final destination. Yeah, and also it um, has ability to get the data from like to collect the data from another um, another different platforms. Yeah, so here the OTLP we will use for the our instrumented applications and uh, different receivers we can use to collect the data. Uh, for example, we can collect the tracing data from already existing Jagger instance, make some kind of modifications and send it, for example, to Dynatrace or to the Datadog, something like that. Uh, so it's a great stuff with open telemetry that we can use the different providers, different formats. We will uh, do all the um, modifications with a standard standardized format and again we will be able to send it to any kind of um, uh, platform or or backend type yeah so it's how it actually works we can deploy the agent in two modes we can use the agent mode and we can use the gateway mode so the agent mode it means that we use like one um, instance of our open telemetry uh, collector per application instance. For example, if you use the Kubernetes pods, it means that the container with the open telemetry collector will be injected to your pod. Another uh, thing, it's a gateway. Uh, so, for example, we uh, can do not instrument each application instance with the open telemetry agent, but we can create the pool of the open telemetry collectors that we can scale like vertically and horizontally uh, and send the data through the OTLP protocol, send it there. So each of these, um, each of these uh, like approaches has its own uh, like benefits and constraints. So in case of the agent, it's a, uh, like mostly a recommended way because like uh, it will be easier for you to um, like to scale your um, distribution of the open telemetry because each application we will have like its own own collector and uh, you will be able to uh, scale the resources for that collector like just on the. Um, like on the level of the specific application in the gateway approach uh, like it will be slightly harder to scale it because uh, some applications will send like more like more data and some of them will send less data and like you will be need to balance between like the requirements of your applications yeah and also like it's easier definitely easier like to um, use the agents because you can provide the specific configuration and specific modifications for 
uh, for the specific application. Yeah, so we will define the whole whole pipeline for the specific application. In gateway approach, you will need to set up the complicated uh, routing of your data. But again, it's not a bad approach, but um, it's uh, like less recommended than, than the agent um, agent way. So again, once you will just try to do something with open telemetry, just uh, try to use like two approaches and then combine uh, compare like which approach will give more benefits for you. Um, again, how it actually works. Uh, so we have the different kind of receivers. So it's this slide just demonstrate uh, demonstrate like the um, ways how we can send our like data to which which destinations and from which destinations we can collect our data. So we have a lot of different kinds of receivers uh, that you can just uh, take a look with the open telemetry collector contribution uh, repository. And actually, if you need to add your own, you can easily propose your changes and add um, additional type of receiver or exporter for the purpose. So I had chance, for example, uh, to create uh, the specific uh, exporter for the for the open telemetry, and it, 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 it's included to the uh, to the to this country library. And it's proposed to the different users. Yeah, so it means that you can easily add the receivers, and you can easily add your own implementation of the exporter. And it's a great way how you can um, like manage all your observability data in that centralized way. So as I will share this presentation, we will have this link and you will be able to see how many different exporters and receivers you can uh, use from out from the box. How the configuration of the collector looks like. It's pretty easy. So you need to define a set of the receivers then you need to define a set of the processors and the same for the exporters. Optionally, you can include some additional extensions. So here, like in our uh, practical demo, we will use just the health check and uh, extension uh, that will, for example, expose uh, additional port of the collector that we will be able to check uh, to understand if our mm, collector is ready to consume the data. So it's a um, uh, very useful when we, we again when we deploy everything through the Kubernetes, uh, and we want uh, to add the liveness or readiness or startup props uh, to the health check. And once we defined all that items, we can um, like combine everything to to the pipeline. So, for example, for the metrics, we defined the set of the receivers that we will use then the processors that we will use and then the exporters that we will use. So it means that all the metrics data will go uh, will be collected from the OTLP. Then it will be um, uh, processed through the batch processor. And again, it will be sent to the exporter that is called this OTLP. Yeah, and the same for the rest of the, of the data. Uh, why they defined here this like stuff that is called service because uh, again it's a one more way um, uh, how to like, propose you to use the agent uh, way of the deployment so for each service you will have your own pipeline yeah and um, for example like if we instrument uh, our application with the uh, open telemetry collector. So for that purposes, we mostly will use the OTLP endpoint uh, that can use with gRPC or HTTP protocol. So the configuration is pretty straightforward. So here on this screen is also almost presented all the options. Uh, one thing is that uh, we have a different kind of receivers, a different kind of exporters. So to check in what you can use here, you will be need to just refer to the documentation. Uh, how we will instrument, for example, here is an example how we can instrument the metrics and uh, and traces 
with our application. So we have the application, we instrumented it with uh, our uh, open telemetry SDK, and then we will send all the data through the OTLP protocol to the collector. So uh, we have the OTLP receiver that um, uh, accept uh, both like traces and metrics data. Then we will uh, use some kind of filter processor, transform processor for the trace uh, for the metrics. The same uh, span metrics processor for the uh, for this data, and then we will just decide to which destination we will send to it. Yeah, for example, we have here Prometheus metrics that will expose all the collection. Uh, collected metrics uh, outside of the collectors. And then we will be able to scrub those metrics from the collector with the Prometheus. However, like beside the Prometheus exporter, um, we have Prometheus push exporter. So that allows you to send directly uh, data directly to the Prometheus push gateway. So it depends on, on your needs, but I prefer the way with scrapping for the data. And I'll also like uh, demonstrate you how, how this could be done. And the traces data here is uh, will be sent uh, through the uh, OTLP to the Jagger. Why uh, through the OTLP? Because the open telemetry collector has the Jagger um, exporter, yeah, that um, sends it through the Jagger API. However, the Jagger extended uh, their code base. And for now, the Jagger also uh, has um, the stable endpoint that uh, that is compatible with the OTLP form. Actually, it's an OTLP endpoint, so you can send the data through the OTL in the like OTLP format, and through that protocol, you will be able to send it directly to the Jagger. So you don't need to use the Jagger HTTP API for that purposes. And after that, we will be able to visualize all the data through the Grafana. Yeah, so very actually very easy what about the logging stuff so as i mentioned the logging stuff is um, um, slightly complicated uh, than the metrics and tracing stuff so uh, you need to use the api and then uh, for example for some languages like python here yeah, uh, the open telemetry sdk Propose the integration with the standard logging library of the Python. Yeah, that's what we will use in our example. And uh, we will use the SDK like to send the data uh, through the OTLP to our collector. Yeah, so here we need to use like more components and we need to instrument everything manually. In case of the metrics and traces that could be automatically instrumented and we probably won't be need to touch the application code itself and open telemetry will send the different observability data types to the back different different backends or it could be definitely one backend for example if you use for example new relic platform that uh, supports operation with a different kind of observability data in that case uh, you can use just one backend for the purposes uh, another way how this could be done is uh, with writing of the logs to some middleware files or or pipes or etc. So the open telemetry collector has a specific type of the receiver that allows to consume the logs from the from the log files. What actually um, is pretty good so it works in the stable way so in that case uh, like you can use uh, you can you can use it like to collect it from the files however like this approach requires some additional storage space and consumption of the storage so i do not prefer like, to, to make some, some something like that another way you can use uh like the fluent bit. So if you remember, again, if you remember the session related to the, um, to the logging with the Kubernetes. So in that case, we can use the fluent bit to collect the logs 
from some files, or for example, you can use the logs directly to the Fluent Bit and then send the data uh, from the Fluent Bit via forward protocol to the Open Telemetry. So Open Telemetry has a specific receiver that um, accepts the data in the Fluent Bit format. So this stuff also looks fine. So um, maybe I also prefer to to use this this case, but the main constraint of this case that you will be need to uh, support two different collectors. Another benefit of this um, approach that on the Fluent Bit side, um, you will be able to perform more complicated transformation of your logging data. So just keep in mind. So it depends on um, like um, how much transformations you will be need to perform on your logs data. If it's a simple transformation like add field or remove field, open telemetry collector will be enough. If it uh, relates to the parsing stuff, then use the fluent bit. But um, most of the backends supports the parsing uh, on the backend side. Maybe this is a good way. For example, if you have the elastic search, you have an ingest nodes. Um, Let's do not try to use the fluent bit and send like the raw data through the open telemetry without any changes. And then to the backend side, perform all the parsing because like it will be easier uh, for us, for example, to automatically scale the interest nodes to perform any kind of parsing. Again, uh, again, this, uh, like there are a lot of different approaches and it depends on your needs. So, and it depends not only on your needs, but also on um, on the technical task that you need to solve. So just keep in mind that you have those approaches and you need to select that approach that will be compatible with the requirements. Um, another great way is like if you will use the open telemetry with the Kubernetes, you don't need to instrument your application with the open telemetry collector. You can install the open telemetry operator for that purposes. So it means that you will just add, uh, like for example, your application port. You will be need uh, to add just specific annotation, and the open telemetry operator will inject the sidecar container with specific configuration um, to your application. So it means that you can uh, keep your application independent from 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 this layer and use the operator to instrument all the data. Uh, in the same way, the, you could use the open telemetry operator to deploy. Um, the collectors or a set of the collectors, um, like if you remember, yeah. So here is the agent way of the deployment, and here we will have the gateway. So it depends, like what you actually will be need. But for the Kubernetes purposes, I suggest to use the Open Telemetry operator. So it will uh, reduce the time of the integration and um, save your time for the maintenance of that stuff. Uh, what about the visualization? So as I mentioned before, we can use the Grafana, for example, to uh, like that in, in that time that Grafana supports a different time uh, type of the data sources. We, we can use the Grafana to visualize all the data. It's what we actually will perform on um, on our demo stuff. Yeah, here is how we'll be present the logs data. So you are probably remember this screenshot from the session about the Kubernetes logging. Yeah, but um, here is, for example, presented how the metrics could be demonstrated through the Prometheus. Yeah, and uh, last stuff, it's how the tracing looks like. So if you familiar with the Jagger and uh, had chance to use the Jagger UI, so uh, it visualizes data like the span, span and traces data in the same way. So definitely, uh, you can use the Grafana. Is uh, like to do not use the Jagger UI. You can use the Grafana because it will help you like to build build like better uh, better dashboards. And also, Grafana is uh, the standalone tool that has the security and authorization rather than the Jagger UI that is pretty simple and has no uh, options for the authorization and 
like you will have a lot of headache with that. Uh, it's how all this data looks like and um, what we actually will do during our practical demo. We will implement all this open telemetry stuff from scratch. Uh, so I already prepared all the code base. I'll just uh, explain you like what we have here. Could you see my uh, VS code? Yes. Okay, awesome. Uh, so we have uh, like I, this time no Kubernetes, uh, just uh, like um, like to save the time. Um, so what we will actually do here, we will uh, like deploy a set of this set of the backends that we will use to store different telemetry data. We will set up the Loki where we will store our logging data. We will set up Prometheus for the metrics data and we will set up the Jagger. But in this case, it will be all in one because uh, like, as it's a demo, we need to implement everything quickly. So we uh, don't do this on the production side. It's just for the uh, self usage or the, um, uh, or the development purposes. And also we will uh, deploy the Grafana to visualize all the data. So as you can see, Grafana depends on all these three backends. So we will deploy it and then visualize, and then we will just connect it to the Grafana. So for each service, I added a specific uh, health check. Uh, also, we have the health check for the open telemetry collector. However, like this is the slim image yeah, and it uh, doesn't contain any kind of data beside the open telemetry binary file. So I just commented it. So probably if you will use it with a Kubernetes, you will be able to use this endpoint uh, to uh, set up the readiness or liveness probes. Uh, for the open telemetry collector, I use the open telemetry collector contrib image. However, for the production purposes, you will be able just to use the open telemetry collector. Why I use the contrib? Because I need to use the uh, Loki exporter. And for now, it's not included to the standard. Um, it's not included to the standard distribution. Yeah. Uh, so it depends on your needs. Like uh, for this demo, we will use this one, but uh, for the production purposes, probably if you will use another log, uh, logging backend, you will be able to use the specific image. The difference between those two images is not so big. Yeah, beside that stuff that the contrib image contains like more different receivers and exporters from the uh, contrib uh library that i actually demonstrated to you also we will expose two different ports we will expose the port 4317 uh, and 4318 uh, this will be for the hotel receiver uh, with the http protocol and this one will be for the hotel receiver with grpc protocol so i just uh, exposed both of them but in your case you will be able just to use uh, one endpoint so i recommend to use grpc stuff in that case uh what else would be interesting here uh -huh. uh, about the scrapping of the data so uh for the prometheus we will define one scrap stuff so we will uh like scrap the data from the hotel collector so all the metrics data that we will collect from our application the hotel collector we will we will expose to some specific port and we will use uh, uh the prometheus to collect the data from the from that collector uh, it's a great way how you can like, how you can achieve this. Uh, another way I mentioned, yeah, you can use the the exporter for the push stuff and do not scrap the data, but expose the push gateway for the Prometheus and um, collect the data on that side. 
for the Grafana stuff, I added the automatic provisioning. So I'll just demonstrate how it looks like. So to reduce the time of, of this demo, so I just uh, added uh, ability like to automatically provision pro provide all the sources. So one for the Loki, one for the Prometheus, and one for the Jagger. So one more important thing, probably if you're not aware that Jagger um, exposes a lot of different different ports. Uh, so and each port has its um, like uh, own. On, on functionality. So if you, for example, will use Jagger, just refer to the Jagger documentation to understand actually uh, which port you will be need to use. So this is a port of the uh, query UI that is mostly used with the with the Grafana. So you can take it from, from this example. Uh, and the last part that we use uh, in our demo, it's the configuration for the open telemetry. Uh, so it looks pretty simple. So we have two we have one receiver, it's OTLP receiver uh, that works through the gRPC and the HTTP protocol. So additionally, for the testing purposes, I added the course here to um, uh, get the data um, through all different protocols. It's a reason why I actually don't like to use the HTTP and I prefer to use gRPC because I don't need to define the course here. And mostly like on the production system, I will use some kind of uh, service mesh proxy to connect all that stuff together and do not use it in such way. So uh, as I will share all this package with you with, through the blog, so I also added additional links to the documentation where you will be able to get all the um, information like about different parts of the configuration. So here I will use just a simple batch processor. So why actually I need batch processor? So to do not send the data like one by one and to like, save some, some portion of traffic, I will just uh, combine all kind of data to, to the batch and will compress it and send it as open telemetry supports the automatic compression. compression. So I'll just compress it and um, send it to the specific destination. And as exporter, I use the Loki stuff. Um, then I use the um, Prometheus uh, endpoint where I will just expose all the metrics. Also here I will use the OTLP Jagger. So actually I can use it in such way. Yeah, so I can write just OTLP and here I uh, will just uh, refer to the endpoint with, uh, with Jagger. Yeah, but I added uh, this slash construction to make it transparent. Yeah, because in that case, it will be OTLP here, OTLP here. So every everywhere it will be OTLP and it, it might be confusing. So why we need such syntax? For example, if I want to expose two OTLP um, receivers, yeah, of the same type, I can use slash and put some specific name for such receiver because I will be need to uh, refer to the name of this receiver here. Yeah. So in that case, I can just define it in such way. If I have just one, so I can just omit the part, part with the name. So just keep in mind that um, this is not necessary. And uh, also here, I actually exposed the um, like added link for the native Jagger exporter, but it's deprecated. Uh, continue to use the OTLP stuff here. And additionally, I added this um, login exporter. So this will, um, this mostly used for the debug purposes. Uh, so I will just also add it for each kind of, uh, of data here. Uh, so it will uh, write all the data to the open telemetry collector STD out. So for the debug purposes, and for example, I can just uh, command this one and this section, uh, start everything and check 
in the console if, for example, logs from my application comes successfully and like for the debug purposes, it's a, it's a great tool. But again, for the production purposes, just command this one and remove it from here. Uh, in the service section here, I need to define the set of the extension that I will use, um, then set of the receivers for the logs, metrics and uh, traces, and the same for the processors and for the exporters. So after I will perform all that items and I will combine it. Um, so everything is ready, ready to start. So the first step, what we will perform here. So um, as we already reviewed the, the Docker Compose configuration, so we can deploy our collector. We can deploy our collector uh, and uh, the backend side. So I'll just uh, do this one. Okay, all the stuff is started here. Let's check. Mm, it's volumes. Okay, so as I added the health checks, I will see uh, the status of each each container here. Yeah, so the Grafana is healthy, Loki is starting. Okay, mostly I can try to access the Grafana on my local. Yeah, so I'll start with the standard admin admin credentials. Skip checking all this stuff and I'll go to the uh, data sources. So here um, I have automatically provisioned these resources, one for the metrics one for the logs and one for the tracer. Yeah, let's check for the primitive stuff. Okay, works fine. Uh, for the Jagger stuff. For the Jagger stuff, probably if you will uh, try to, to check, the first time you will get, you will have the, this kind of error. So just try to retest and everything will be fine. I'm not sure why it works in such way. It might, might be some issue with Grafana, but definitely it's fine and the same for the Loki stuff let's check if it's healthy yeah it's healthy so it started to work uh, so here we could see the data source connected but no labels received so usually we have this warning uh, when we hadn't any kind of data in our Loki as we hadn't chance to start sending the data to our Loki so it will throw this error. Once we will send at least one record, uh, everything will be fine and you will see the um, success rate. What we have uh, through the logs in our open telemetry collector. So the service is actually ready. So as we have all the backend uh, prepared um, for uh, receiving the data, we can proceed with the development of our application. Uh, great news that we don't need to develop something because I already prepared all the stuff for you. Uh, let's check, like I decided to use the Python, like, but because like it's a language that mostly used by the DevOps engineers. But again, if you're familiar with Java or JavaScript or anything else, just refer to the open telemetry just a sec. Um, and here, just check the um, instrumentation and you will find all the stuff for uh, every programming language here. So just keep this in mind. Okay, let's put it here because we will be needed maybe in the, in the future. So what I actually need here, which dependencies I need here. So for different languages, we have a different kind of dependencies, but for the Python, I need to use the Flask because like I'm lazy and I don't want to develop something complicated. I want just a simple HTTP application with one endpoint. Then I need to install the open telemetry distro. So uh, open telemetry distro uh, contains uh, the open telemetry API, open telemetry SDK, and also a set of the tools for the automatic instrumentation of our 
application. So as you remember, I mentioned like to inst automatically instrument our application, we will be need just to wrap it, uh, wrap it uh, with some additional tools. So this distro will give us ability to perform that. And also I need just two separate libraries. Uh, it's an exporter for the OTLP. So it means that from my application, I will be able to send the data, um, send the data to my collector through the OTLP with gRPC or HTTP protocol. So I installed both, but mostly you will be need just one. Yeah, the first step that you will be need to perform it's to install all these dependencies. Yeah, and and actually that's that's all. Uh, the next step is to write some 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 simple application. So what I'm actually doing here, yeah. So I define just one endpoint that will call some some specific function that will generate some random value and will return the result of this value. In the same time, I added some additional logging stuff. So here it's just um, keep in mind that this is the native, uh, uh, this is the native syntax of the Flask. So no open telemetry here. So I'm just uh, doing all, all in the native way. Yeah, so for example, if I won't be need to use the open telemetry, this will still work because it's a native feature of the Flask. So here I added additional tracing, uh, starting of the additional tracing span, just uh, to demonstrate. So for example, if I will remove it, as I will have the automatic instrumentation, I will have just like uh, trace just with one span, the general span that will be provided uh, automatically for me. Yeah, but I want also to demonstrate how you can manually add like additional stuff with trading, tracing. In the same time, you can also add the metric stuff in, uh, in such way. So the logging stuff you can use like the, as we will use the SDK. Yeah, in that case, you will be, you can use uh, the standard libraries um, and do it uh, in, this, in, the, in the way that you perform it before. Yeah, so without any changes. But here I, like an example, I added additional trace. In that trace, I will just additionally, uh, like to understand like how this uh, request, which, which value returned this request, I just started one additional nested span. And in that span, I will just add uh, attribute with, uh, with res uh, response uh, with uh, value generated result. So, uh, and I'll see it like um, in, in my um, Grafana UI. So it's how it actually works. Uh, to uh, like add some additional tracing I, from the open telemetry library, I will just um, export the trace stuff and we'll do something like trace, get tracer. For example, um, uh, I'll do something, uh, I can do something like metric, yeah, and do something like met, uh, matter, metric, metric, get matter and do it in some in same way, yeah. And then just add, like manually add additional metrics. However, uh, like I don't need this one right now. Yeah, so I'll just uh, remove this stuff. Yeah, as my application will be automatically um, instrumented. So I will, I will have, I will already have some general metrics uh, for my HTTP application, like response time, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, and then if I will be need something else, I will be able just to use the uh, additional stuff from the open telemetry library to, to uh, add this stuff. Um, and as I have the automatic instrumenting of the uh, metrics and tracing stuff, just for case, I'll demonstrate in the in the docs here. So um, you can use the automatic stuff 
here. So you can you will use just the open telemetry instrument um, binary, and then we'll just pass the Python command to start your application, just to perform all that changes. And for example, pass additional settings to the open telemetry SDK, like where to export the data and et cetera, et cetera. So all this stuff could be like passed as, um, as parameters for the, for the wrapper, or for example, you can use specific environment variables. Yeah. So for that case, uh, for each uh, item, uh, you can uh, use the specific environment variable. For example, here I created the make file. Yeah, uh, I define it the service name. Yeah, uh, with the environment variable, and also additionally, I uh, define the endpoint to the OTLP. So the open telemetry SDK from my application will use the address from, from this um, environment variable. However, by default, it use like for the, um, for the gRPC, it will use uh, local host 4317. For the HTTP, by default, it will use local host 4318. So I definitely can like, Command this one and everything work, works in such a way. But to add like more transparency, I'll just define it here. If you will go through through this documentation, you will see that a lot of things related to the SDK could be um, configured with environment variables. Even if you want to use automatic instrumentation. Um, you will be a, we will still be able to use the settings from that variable to configure the uh, like exporting of the data with the open telemetry SDK. Yeah, so from that uh, side, uh, I automatically pro provided like I can provide some some stuff via environment variables. So again, here is a great example, uh, and just continue to to start my my application. Another way I can do it like manually. So I will be need to define the tracing provider. Then I will be need to add some kind of processor. So in that case, mostly it's a batch processor. And then I will be need just to add some additional exporter. Yeah. Um, after that, to that provider, I will just add the processor that already has like um, route to the exporter. And then I will just set uh, this provider as a default provider to the trace library of the open telemetry. Then I will just get the, like, get the tracer. And then I will be able just to provide the traces uh, in the way I, that I just demonstrated you here. Yeah, so just very simple. So the same stuff for the for the metrics. So we will just provide them, create the metrics provider, um, set it provider as a default, get the matter and continue to create some kind, different kind of metrics that I probably, if you don't remember which kind of metrics we have, take a look um, on the session where we discussed uh, um, monitoring of the third party application with the Prometheus. So almost all the same type of metrics. And for the login purposes, we don't have any kind of stuff demonstrated here. Yeah, but uh, I created additional uh, example for you. So again, the instrumentation, manual instrumentation of the login works in the same way. So I just create the new provider that I will export from the SDK, add additional processor, and then here uh, I use the OTLP exporter. So in that case, I will use not console exporter, I will use OTLP exporter. Yeah, to send the metric 
extracing uh, like and in this case logs data yeah uh, to send it uh, through the otlp to my collector so add this processor and then set this provider as default one so after that i will just edit this part uh, of the instrumentation to my application and uh, from the open telemetry sdk as i mentioned before i have the logging handler uh, that is provisioned for the default uh, logging library of, of the Python, then just add this uh, logging handler. So it means that I am I will use the logging in the native way, but it will be automatically, it will be additionally processed with this handler. And this handler actually is uh, part of the open telemetry SDK that will get all emitted logging data and we'll send it through the otlp to my collector and from my collector i will send it uh, somewhere else where i will decide uh, before starting of the instrumenting here i also added additional comment that is called bootstrap uh, so the open telemetry framework uh, it's it's pretty lightweight yeah and to add different kind of exporters, batch reporters, and etc. you will be need to execute the bootstrap uh, bootstrap command. So you will just do open telemetry bootstrap install, and it will install all different applications. So I already perform it, but um, ATP, um, make bootstrap. So Sorry. Something. Ah, okay. So it will just perform installation of the different library, different required libraries to, for my purposes. Yeah. Um, yeah, as you can see that we have like it installs like a lot of different uh, different requirements, but mostly you will be needed. Uh, like it doesn't take a lot of of, of storage size. Uh, once I prepared everything, so I instrumented my like application like manually instrumented with with logging stuff provided some side of uh, some part of logs also i added the extra tracing here uh, and then like i don't care about the metrics metrics will be provisioned uh, for me automatically and then i'll just make a run so i will use my open telemetry instrument and then just uh, wrap it the flask run command with this application so it means that this command will uh, inject all the requirements so it will mostly uh, inject uh, these these parts uh, to my application yeah so i can do it manually but like with this tool like it, to reduce the my code base and uh, to don't touch the source code of my application i will just prevent it uh, from 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 this one um and then i can just make make run okay so my application is started on the port 5000 so if i'll take a look on my application i have the specific endpoint that is called roll dice so i'll open my browser i will go through the so that part and I'll go to the roll dice. So it returns three. So every time when I will uh, update this application, so I will see the different number. So here, as I mentioned, we use additional logging um, exporter here. So I see all these data also inside of the um, inside of, of the logs of my open telemetry collector. So as I could see now, I can just go to the Explorer and then check the data. Uh, one more thing that I want to check, for example, I went to the Logi and make a test. Yes, yeah, so my data source now uh, has all labels. So it means that it contains the data. 
let's start with the traces stuff. So here I can, um, if I know the real trace ID, what I definitely cannot know from scratch. So I'll go uh, to the basic search and I need to find the service name. So as I define the service name here, yeah, and actually this service name, it will be appended to all kinds of data, to the metrics data, um, to the logs data, to the tracing data. So just keep in mind this, that you uh, definitely will be need to define the service name. Yeah, so it doesn't matter which kind of SDK you will use, like for JavaScript, for Java, and etc. So it use most of them use the same same naming for the not most of them, all of them use the same naming for the for that SDK parameters because uh, it's SDK for the different languages, but it works in the same way. So, and then here I can just uh, select my service Flask app and then just run query and see how many traces I have. Yeah, so let's open any kind of trace. So here, yeah, uh, as my application was automatically instrumented with the traces, so for each endpoint of my application, the initial span, it, it will be added. So here for my roll dice um, um, endpoint was added the span, but I also added some nested span to it, to just demonstrate you how you can perform the tracing with, with, with that stuff. Um, and I have additional span here. And in this span, I have additional attributes here. Yeah, for example, I set the role value here. So here is my role, uh, role value. Uh, and as for tracing, I could see the start time, I could see the duration of my request, when it happens and et cetera, et cetera. So also I could see uh, the data about the open telemetry, it's the SDK language version of the SDK. So uh, mostly this information um, will be useful for the debugging purposes. So the same here, uh, I have a different attributes here. So it's what actually open telemetry automatic instrumentation added for me. So it's added all the HTTP data, all the data related to the request. Yeah, so, and it's pretty useful. So I don't, so for now, I don't need to instrument each request uh, with, the, with the tracing data. Yeah, so I just can add some nested spans where I will be need to do that. But mostly this SDK uh, for the tracing purposes, it uh, allows to instrument not just the request, but mostly if you would use the, like some kind of database access, uh, you will see all the spans related to the database request. So it also will be useful, for example, to detect the slow queries or or something like that and again in that case you won't be need to instrument all that queries with the tracing spans like we like we did in such way yeah? everything will be done automatically so mostly uh like if you do not even want to use like uh, the open telemetry uh, framework with open telemetry collector uh, you still can use this library to collect all kind of observability data um, to send it like to any other kind of endpoint. And then you will be able to easily use it to migrate from one platform to another platform. So just in, in, in one click, or for example, you can, um, if you need to define some kind of POC, you can define the different exporters for your, uh, for specific kind of data. Yeah. and send the data simultaneously to the different platforms. Uh, then let's take a look on the logs data. So here I will use the job stuff. So uh, the open telemetry will provide the service name as a job name automatically. Yeah? Um, let's go. Okay, so here I see all my logs data and I can see that expand any of, of them. Uh, so here I could see the, the 
just a sec. Um, yeah, so I see the like the body of my um, like inside of the body. I will I could see the um, like the real name, real log line that I uh, propose. I ha I have here the severity stuff. I have the additional attributes here, including the service name. Um, the same inside of the resources, I will have the service name and also I'll have information about the uh, open telemetry SDK version that I use. Yeah, and it uh, defines uh, how, how this application was instrumented like manually. And the last stuff that I want to check, it's the metric stuff. So I don't need the metrics browser here. Let's go to the builder. Okay. Okay, so here I already have like a set of the metrics that are presented for my for my application. So here I can execute some select like export a job that automatically will be populated with my service name and then just get a um, set of the um, set of the metrics that I need. Yeah, so for each request like uh, with uh, all the data that uh, automatically collected with that request, I have it's populated as a labels in my Prometheus metrics. So definitely um, the default instrumentation like collects just the general data, general data types. Yeah, for example, here I have just like one type of the active connection. So here it's presented as one. Uh, yeah, but I can like instrument my application with more complicated uh, metric stuff. Again, it's dep it depends on your purposes. It doesn't mm, mm, matter like if you want um, like use any kind of platform like I don't know, for example, New Relic or the same Datadog. Um, so you can still use like. Mm, to do not inject like the data dog stuff or any kind of vendor provider stuff to um, your application, yeah. So you still can use you can use instead the open telemetry framework. So and after that you will be able to use any kind of backend. So this will um, save you uh, from the vendor log. And this is the great way how you can like collect all the observability data in the same way. Yeah, so and if you like, if you act as a DevOps engineer, because most of the stuff that we discussed here, it's the coding stuff, but as a DevOps engineer, you, you will operate with that kind of the data and uh, to get everything comfortable for you, just push your developers, for example, to use the open telemetry stuff for that. So they will uh, less work with um, uh, adding of the observability layer of the application and you will have all the observability information from your application services. Because mostly from my experience, what I saw that like many of projects wants to like, create new and new features but they don't have uh, the at least the good uh, observability level on their applications they don't have any kind of logs or i don't talk about the tracing itself if you know the project that use the tracing stuff it means that you are lucky um and i think that's all that I just want to demonstrate. Uh, thank you for your attention. And for now, we have like a couple of minutes that we can spend for the discussion. Maybe somebody has any questions. Pink, pink. Yeah, looks like no questions. Uh, uh, yeah, have one. Yeah. Hello, Elder. Okay. Hello, community. So the know. main the main question here: Did you test it on production to receive some uh, some some digits related 
to the workloads at how many resources uh, this application using during the normal usage and what is the limits there because you know you can monitor your infrastructure till the death or by, by monitoring it so in this case uh, for for production usage uh, we need to understand how many resources uh, this approach will uh, need to, to be to be run with, with, uh, I'm clear I understand that it depends on the uh, logs uh, late so if you have a huge amount of the logs it will generate additional load but what about memory what about CPU usage did you have some any data related to it with the nor normal workload okay so I don't have like uh, an actual kind of uh, val metrics values or something like that uh, however I had experience with uh, customers that migrated all their infra to use the open telemetry stuff so and from what I saw they uh, like no no one client uh, performed the rollback to the previous system yeah uh, and uh, like most of the consumption uh, of the resources uh, it depends again on the you uh, you you are right that it depends on the volume of the log data amount of the metrics or tracing data and etc cetera, etc cetera. but from my side what i could say that like this product is written with a golem it's uh, like compiled binary product and mostly it will use like less data for example rather than like java application or something like that yeah um the main thing here i probably can check for example we collected uh, the data on this simple application let me check for example if i can see here how much memory i use uh, okay so mostly for the simple stuff i have like 40 megabytes of the memory for the tracing data, for the metrics data, and for the logs data. Yeah, what about the CPU? It's funny, it's less than one percentage of the CPU. Yeah, I agree that I didn't, didn't send like a lot of data, but mostly like even if you will send like uh, more than like data like in one or like in a 10 or 1000 or 100 times more than I send, then I think you will have like uh, a slightly bigger result, but not so critical. And again, just expect that like it's my working machine and it doesn't contain a lot of resources. It's not a server, it's a laptop. No, I fully understand it. I probably I thought that you have some uh, data from the previous deployment and you can just. Uh... Uh, tell us about what is the real usage of the memory and CPU or by, because you know that uh, in real time you have uh, 40 megabytes of memory consumption for like 10 or 15 requests to the simple application. What will happen if I, if I have like several thousand requests uh, or logs per, per second? Because you know that all of this stuff uh, will... will uh, collect all the data, logs, metrics, uh, traces, all of this stuff. If you have a lot of application which generates like tons of the logs, ton of the metrics, uh, the memory consumption and CPU usage will be much interesting thing we, we, we should know about. Because you know, the 3% three per, three percent of CPU usage for 15, uh, for 15 requests for generate random integer from one to six it's like pretty much here uh yeah, no it's not a, it's not a question it's just i'm just uh, providing you with the my understanding so uh, the, uh do you plan in the future to create some like a uh, lot test on this deployment for example to get understanding what is the real consumption of the memory for example for 10 services which send in 10 metrics per second or one metric per second just to somehow realize the real uh, CPU and uh, memory consumption. Yeah, that's that's really interesting. However, like 
just to remind, yeah, we as I mentioned, we have the two different ways. So we, like we have the agent way how we can deploy, and we have gateway how we can deploy. For example, if you deploy your application with Kubernetes, so each Kubernetes pod will have like um, at least one um, at least one agent as a sidecar container container of your pod. So each pod, for example, if your pod will like perform 100 of requests per second, so it's a huge value. So definitely, definitely like you will have the uh, agent that definitely will consume all that items. Yeah, but I agreed like uh, um, I can just tell you a lot about that, but like it's easier to look up on the metric stuff. But for my yeah, hours, presentation was per perfect. So you yeah, provide the all information, how the data flow is going, how the application works, how to receive all the necessary stuff to just to play with it. So it, it was super. Thank you for the clarification. So uh, if you don't mind, I will contact you directly later. To yeah, not a problem. I think I think I have a source when I can get so get oh, this super. information. I, I'll try to contact my colleagues from the previous project. Maybe like they will provide some. Maybe, maybe if you have sampling, uh, sampling data, data, you can share it with data. Us. Yeah, absolutely.